what's going on, y'all? We got our boy, Mr. Top 16 himself, Jonathan Lanza, back with the boy, Go Hanks, going at it in the new format, still doing the thing. And uh, we're gonna bring you a nice little deck profile from our team checkmate, Fusion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. A shout out to our sponsors, Mr. World Champ himself, Legends. You know how it is, you know, oh, taking yeah, care yeah, of us, yeah. take care of the squad, Mr. Right. Ginger Fusion. Our sugar daddy. Yeah, exactly. Basically. Yeah, yeah pretty much. The boys, appreciate you all. Anyway. All right. <laughs> Let's get to it. <laughs> you can get into the deck list. Uh, obviously, you know the leader. It is probably the one of the best red leaders, other than, I don't know, Kid Koo's pretty good. And uh, Pan, Pan also topped in the event. I think he got third? Yeah, third place. Yeah, third. So. Shout out to that. I'm going to be playing that uh, when the support comes out in the anniversary set. But let's get into it. So obviously, I'm sure everybody knows all the red cards by now. Uh, you have the four of now for the eight drop. Just with the limit of the um, double striker, you just want to add more cards. So pretty much just add more consistency to the deck. So you have the eight drop. The nice thing about the eight drop is you tuck it under the field and you can play it from under the field. So you're really not losing anything by adding more. You're just making the deck more consistent. Four Bulmas. Normally, I used to run three, now I run four. So just, once again, adding to the consistency, trying to find the cards that you're looking for. Most of the time, you're searching for the, the one that negs, actually, has come up a lot. And um, one of the biggest things it did for me was I was going against a couple matches where they had uh, 5K unisons out, the new, the new Z unisons. You tuck it under and then you combo with it and you remove two markers off the unison. I actually did that multiple times into the green decks and it just kill it just kills the unison. You only spend one swing on it, so it's pretty it's pretty effective. Nice. Obviously four of the neg guy, uh, he's, he's just the best one, honestly. He plays himself and then you can immediately neg something without so you get the draw before if they have some sort of uh, on attack response that kills it or something like that. You can use it and get the value before it dies. Uh, also, it's just, you know, it hits a unison as well, which nowadays with all the Z unisons coming out, it's pretty effective, pretty useful. Uh, and then we run, bam, four of the S SR and one S, three of the SR and one of the SBR because I can't find a third SR to save my life. Um, card's still good. You, on turn two, play a draw card. You all know that. And then turn three, if it lives, you can do more stuff, restand it, give it double strike. And this is one of the main reasons why losing... Uh, limiting the double striker doesn't matter too much because this card innately has double strike so you don't even have to restand it you can just play it give it double strike and then swing you already draw a card on play so even if they counterplay you with something else it doesn't matter you draw so unless they send it to a drop but actually I think this still draws yeah, yeah it it's still it's draws even if it's sent to the drop yeah. so it doesn't matter you're always gonna get the card back next that's the wrong way for the crit since we don't have the double striker anymore, you need to up your numbers of other stuff. Crit, I didn't really use it that much, honestly, because most of the time people are going to four, or going to six, and then going down to four anyways. So they're gonna get a lot of their life into their hand before it really matters. The only time I can really consistently say that crit came in handy is when you're taking them from four to two. So if you're eight dropping, you give them crit, you give them double strike, and you take them from four to two, you're either gonna rip a ton of cards out of their hands which I also did in the event. I ripped like six cards versus, you know, the two life that they would have lost. And that's that's how I killed them pretty much. <clears throat> but other than that, it's just a combo piece, right? It's just a free 5K and it just uh, draws you cards. Like, other than that, not that not that crazy. And then this is, the, this is the prime winner, I would honestly say. One of the big things, honestly, I did not think this would come up that much. The fact that this is a 5K is so nice, especially when you're going into other red matches because it allows you to throw itself away instead of throwing like two of these guys because they're 4Ks. So having this guy, uh, I probably comboed with this guy the most and searched for it the most just because of how useful it is in the current meta and with all the other cards. Another fun thing that I actually learned, because I hadn't run any Kidku until that tournament and that was my first experience with it, I lost to uh, DeCost on round three and then the other ones that I ran into, I used the knowledge that I had from DeCost and I beat the others, so that was really nice. And a fun thing is you can swing with your leader, combo this, neg their 30k if they have it on the field. It's now a 25k. They can't chow to you for free. They can't. It's hilarious. I watched a dude pay one for a chow to and then uh, he died. That's fire. <laughs> yeah. That is fire. So in, in case you were wondering, yeah, they have to have the, a 30k and you can just neg it before they can counterplay it. So it doesn't matter. 
Uh, super combos, I'm probably the weirdest one when it comes to super combos. I run four of the Raditz and then one of the Sparking Broly. It's a Saiyan, so you can tuck it, you can search for it, all that jazz. The nice thing is it's just an early counter or an early super combo because there's a lot of times where people are trying to double strike you from five to three. This helps you get out of that. I had a couple of times where it actually came up where, because you're, you're throwing so many cards in the drop anyways with your leader ability and with Bulma. So you're definitely gonna have Sparking Five by that point. Next up, I don't know if this is, ah. So we're down to the threes. Three of barrier, increased from two to three. That's pretty much it. Barrier came up uh, quite a bit. I actually used it more often than not. Uh, every time I played my eight drop, I would throw a barrier on it pretty much immediately because it forces the opponent to answer it in other means, especially if they, um, like I ran into some green matchups where they dormanted me. So I'd swing twice with my eight drop and then it just sit there and restood and, they, and it had barrier. So they were forced to play the uh, eight drop. Uh, what is it called? The Gohan childhood with Goku? Solidarity, I think, because that's their only way to remove it. I think that's what it's called, right? In green? Yeah, green. Solid. They drop uh, oh, pop solid. a barrier yes. discard. Solidarity? Yeah, 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 yeah. So they had to play that uh, to pretty much get rid of it. So Obviously, it's still a good card, but this is just nice. Makes it harder to remove your 8-drop. And sometimes it sticks around. I had mine stick around once or twice, uh, and then I got to swing with two 8-drops, and uh, yeah, they died. Pretty, pretty common outcome. Two Broly's, card's still good. Broken. Uh, one mana, 25k, draw a card, or remove something, will always be good. And uh, even if they remove it, it's, you can, you know, it's it's fine. I did have one match where it kind of just sat on the field, but it's still a swing, so for one mana. Can't complain too much. Two Gotens. These are just fillers. I'm gonna be completely honest, I never played it once. I sided it out every single time. I just needed to get to my card of 55, so that way I had some room to play with my side deck, and these are all I had on hand, so this is what I threw in. So yeah, they're gonna get replaced with other stuff soon. Two Gohan counterplays. Uh, I don't think I played it once, gonna be honest. There was never really a time that I wanted to play it over versus uh, keeping mana up to counter. Like, you, you do enough on your turn, you don't really need to do anything on their turn. I think I uh, used it to kill something. I think I used it to kill like an SCR. I played it and, and then another card to kill something on my turn, but past that, I don't think I ever played it on my opponent's turn. Still a good card though, highly recommend. I think we're in two, two drops though, yeah. Two of the dual attacker. This guy is really good early into Kid Koo because Kid Koo can't do anything about it. You just swing twice, swing with your leader, and then swing with the uh, SR, and you deal four damage to them, or they combo out, uh, and they lose cards. And then if they want to play their fountain, they have to lose two life, mandatory. So I had one dude who I got down to four life on turn two, and he didn't even play waters. He just played the uh, other Z extra, and then I killed him right after. So yeah, it's uh, pretty good with aggroing uh, down uh, decks that have no early defense. <clears throat> now I think we're into the one drops. Nope, still into two drops. Two Mize, uh, I don't have Goku or Vegeta on me, so two Mize. It is just a one mana draw card and combo it off and get rid of it. Uh, if I saw it later in the game, I'd just charge it. Other than that, it, because it's an Earthling only, I can't uh, stick it under the Z extra. So other than that, it's yeah, just a one mana draw card for early game. Okay, now we're into the ones. One secret ID. I saw it maybe once or twice, never played it. Just luck of the draw, right? It's not searchable in the deck, so every time you have to throw it to the bottom if you see it, but it's not the worst. If it does come up, it does. It's good into Kidku because you can get rid of two of their skillless cards, and once they're in the warp, they're gone forever, and that deck, uh, depending on who you play against, plays different amounts of skillless cards. I've seen some run 12, I've seen some run five, it really just depends on who you're playing against. <laughs> Card's still good though. One King Vegeta Hidden Ambition. I did not use it, but it is still a staple that I run in every red deck, because especially with green running around. You have Dormant, you have the uh, Uneasing Rage, I believe it's called, uh, counterplay. And then even in uh, yellow, because if they tie magic, you're a drop, yeah. it's, it's, it's rough. All so around, can, good, especially in blue, yellow, yeah, green. They, they, can, they all got some. Yeah, they all have one mana free negates, that, free sparking negates that they want to play. So it's just a good card to always have the stable one of, even if you don't run more than that. Like it's just good. Also, you can tuck it because it's a Saiyan and draw two cards. Can't complain. Ser, don't run anything else. There's literally no reason to run anything else. 
the new the new one that it allows you to switch the attack to it if you have a 30k it's cool you can't play it in this really because you don't have 30ks but it this is just it until they print something better which i doubt they'll do royal evolution i used it in uh, my cooler matchup i have face cooler around two that was uh, pretty interesting uh didn't go as bad as i thought it would so that's nice good to know that my sideboard is working with me uh but this card's just good it allows you to restand your leader and attack with it um uh, pass that it's uh it's good into red as well because non-leader attacks for um explosive dance so you can just attack twice with your leader get more free combos stuff like that and it's a 15k so you can get rid of it for your explosive dance and here it is the one the limit one double strike had zero effect on, on my gameplay whatsoever, only being at one. I saw it every time without fail, and uh, sometimes I didn't even use it. Just as a factory combo, because you, you just, it's not always necessary. But yeah. On to the extra cards. I run three explosive dance in the main board. Card's good. It's best red negate in the game. Got nothing else to say. Testing me out. Just a good card. I like it. It's uh, useful in some situations, not useful in others. It's really dependent. You can side them out, increase, decrease, whatever you want to do, whatever you think is better. Some people like it, some people don't. I think in the current meta, it's okay. It used to be worse back when A21 was in the, the meta, that because then you just give them free energy and stuff like that, but that deck hasn't seen much play, so it's not too bad. Two Death Ball. I'm gonna be honest, I think I used this once and it was to overkill the hell out of somebody because I drew both of them, neg their leader to a zero, uh, negative 5k and had like 100 plus to their negative 5 so I think that's the only time I used it, other times I sided it out. It's still good in the deck, I think it's still worth a slot because it can be useful uh, in certain matchups but it really, it depends. It, it has very unique uses I think compared to previously. Especially with the limit on the double strike. It doesn't affect it that much, but like I said, it's situational. Free sparking negate. Hey, I was just talking about that with the uh, King Vegeta. That's crazy. Just run it as a one-of because in the early game you might need it. And if you're stuck at six life, it can take you down to five life, which is useful because then you can uh, token negate. Fly to the Grand Eagle. Sounds crazy, but it's not because there was a victory striker, and I think he got fourth. Or maybe he got third. No, Either the way, Panda got third. The Panda got yeah. third, but there was victory there strike, was and he did top, top eight. So, this right here. <laughs> it's unaffected by extra effects, but that's okay, because this just makes your leader 100k, or 115k. So, I, I still respect the hell out of that SCR, because it's terrifying. And I did play a U7 deck, but they played Perumio, so. Yeah, that is the main board. Pretty... I don't know. Some of the things may not be buck standard, and some of the things may be. It just depends. I am I do a lot of weird things with my decks, especially due to my limited card pool currently, but it's okay. The sideboard. Three Koizakai. You need it. Koizakai ruins so many decks, especially Kid Koo. I watched a man neg eight in his hand because he was like, I have to play something for value, and I'm like, you really don't, man. Like, you can just let me hit you. It, needless to say, he uh, it didn't go well for him card is still broken. Also, it lets you cycle through your deck. Throw bad cards to the bottom, throw good cards to the top. This is my safety net, uh, Demigros, against Vegito, which I did not run into. It's also good into, like, Yellow Sin and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I didn't use it. I sided it in once, didn't need it. Love this card. We'll always love this card. It is so good. Even if you're not going against a multicolored deck, like I use this in my cooler matchup, just to pump my leader and make it a 20k. Like, it's just it's just a good card all around. You can rip so much out of it. You can rip uh, 5k or less negates or any card. You can rip out any multicolor card. Uh, and then you can also boost your leader if you need it. So, I mean, it's just a versatile good card. Especially with the banning of Unison of Rage. That was uh, an interesting ban, but I mean, I get it, so. It had to happen. It needed to happen. Yeah, it had to happen. There was no happen. way, bro. Yeah. Nobody so now, can defend it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you just can't play cards for the That's next That's what I'm saying. Like... Yeah, no thanks. Uh, to this guy, still respect barrier, still respect yellow, because, you know, you have to. This deck has an eight barrier removal with the eight drop, but the eight drop is a turn four play. 
So if they develop stuff early, you have to be able to get rid of it and deal with it. Plus, if somebody swarms the board with a bunch of 25Ks, you can pay three to play this, I guess. I don't do that anymore. I used to back in the day, but nobody swamps the board like KP does, so. But I hear the new one's pretty good, so who knows. One imposing presence, even if the infinite attacker got limited, still respect it, you know. Plus this is also good into other dual attack decks like Tapion. You just uh, play this, and then all of their 25Ks become 20Ks, which then become 15Ks, and suddenly they're less scary. Hopefully. Fourth Explosive Dance, for when you really don't want to play the game. You just never know. It's useful. This is because I hate free negates. <laughs> I love this card. What can I say? I like to run one in the side, one in the main. It's a good card. One Violent Rays, because I didn't have another. I would definitely run two, um, especially with Kiku running around so much. Yeah, it's just it's just a good card. It literally turns off their turn. doesn't matter how big their board is. doesn't matter if they play SCR. They can't attack with it. They can't do anything. So it's just a good card in this current meta. Even into black, it's good, because they have a ton of 30Ks that they develop as well. So... Vegito, you know, gotta respect them. Yeah. Uh, and Trunks, oh my goodness. Yeah, with the Trunks new promo, back too. that triple striker, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to deal with that. Second Royal Evolution. Uh, once again, just restand your leader, especially because there's hacks running around. Thanks, Ivo. Well <laughs> We don't talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, need need more swings in other ways. Especially in a deck that draws so much, you want to prevent yourself from getting milled or decking yourself out, so you have to have other avenues. So, there you go. And then Dispo, because I still hate Mechie. That's fair. It's also good into um, Beast Hunt. Yeah. Because they can restand their leader. Um, I know Soul Striker is getting more popular. People are trying it out, seeing, that is seeing true. if it could work. So and Victory just... Strike is popular too, some more than. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. <clears throat> May as well have it. Yeah, it's just good. You can uh, negate a leader swing, and then if they they can swing with it again, so it's just a useful tech card. Doesn't doesn't see play all the time, but I mean it's that's what tech is for, you know. That's it's meant for those niche things. All right, on to the Z deck. Don't judge me. One Z leader never went into it. Card is so insignificant. It is literally like you're never gonna have three Z energy. If you do. That's because you're losing cards in hand to green or to blue because it, but you know, either way, never played it. This guy, Surmounting the Impossible, still a good card, still versatile. I didn't use it once. Uh, it's just as a check in case I'm going against any control decks and I need to start taking life. That's pretty much what it's there for and that's what it'll always be there for. One Burn Boy. In case you gotta take him from four to three. It's just a useful, useful item, especially when it comes down to the wire. Burning them for one life, and then you have a barrier double striker that you can swing with. It's nice. It allow, allows for a little bit more security, makes it a little bit more safe, and it can help with uh, how many... Because if they have a ton of life negates, right? Like, they can keep taking life. You kind of mitigate that by putting them down to three. <clears throat> Two, Vegeta Rush Attacks. I think it's impossible to play this card in this deck, honestly, but I have nothing else, so I play them. And plus they're like my favorite Z, Z uh, card, so, you know, gotta, gotta rep my favorites. Uh, I have no words for this. I ran out of cards to put in here, so this is what I put in here. I, yeah, don't play this. <laughs> don't, uh, it's it's yeah, just here as a space filler. You do what you gotta do, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the real star of the show, man. This Z Unison in all, in all red decks I recommend, because this thing is cracked. Not only does it have barrier, it has double strike and dual attack. It's nuts. Not to mention it negs something ignoring barrier. That's the biggest part. Allowing all red decks to have something on turn four that can get rid of a barrier card, super nice. And the neg two is also really good. It's a board clear plus it buffs your leader by 5k. So you use SCR, you use this, your leader is now a 30k base on your opponent's next turn. I don't think they're hitting that. Even in Kid Koo, you just have to use one card. You know, I think that's, that's pretty good. I love this card. Best card to come out for a uh, red Z deck. And then two Destroyed West Cities, uh, in case somebody decides to play the five drop boo that pops your, uh, yeah, Destroyed West City. Awesome, dude. Yeah, and that's uh, that's the whole deck. Not bad. 
Wanted to thank all the people who I played against. Thanks for being good sports. Thanks for having a good time. You know, I, yeah. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I've been out of it a little bit due to my current situation. So being able to play online is nice and uh, having fun again. So, yeah, much yeah. appreciated. Yeah. Speaking of your opponents, where are your matchups? Uh, so it was Round One Trunks Arrival, the the new one. That one was super cool, super techy. Uh, I mean, it was Michael Friend, actually, who, who I played against. Cool dude. Love playing against that guy whenever I match up into him. Second match was the Cooler Mill match. Uh, as, as you've heard, it um, went well into my favor because I drew well. Uh, the third match was good old Robert DeCoss, Kid Q. He obliterated me. I did not stand a chance. He turned two, threw down Baby Unison, and tucked like five cards under it, and I was not killing it. And from there, it was all downhill. Uh, the fourth match, oh, goodness, what was it? I think it was U7. Or, no, it was another Kid Koo. That's what it was. I played another Kid Koo. That's the dude who ran 11 Skillless. Shout out to that man. That's that's some... This is... Yeah. Bold take. Bold yeah. take. Yeah. Hey, I mean, whatever works for you, man. Uh, yeah, I won against him. And then I played E7. Uh, that was also another close match. Uh, he had SCR in hand, but I had killed him the turn before. If I didn't, I was going to die, so... He, he'd seen all four Vegeta's, though, which was amazing. The uh, Servant one, astounding that he saw all four. Uh, and then I played against another Kid Koo. I won that one. Uh, I didn't get to see too much of that deck. He kind of unfortunately drew a little bad. He didn't see any of his um, uh, Bunny Girls or Chatsu, so that was kind of rough on his part. So, you know. And then how many is that? I think that's six? Or is that five? Six, five. I wasn't counting, bro. I don't know. Either way, uh, the last one I remember is against... Kevin Zuniga, I think that's how you pronounce his name. I'm sorry if I pronounce it wrong. Uh, he was playing good old Expert Deck Cell. That deck is still good, and it whooped me. He he got me good. Uh, but all good matches. I had a fun, a fun time. I really enjoyed it. So, you know, shout out to Checkmate Fusion, our, our boys. Shout out to Robert DeCoss for winning the whole thing, you know. And, uh, yeah, thanks. That's awesome, dude. I can crash on the top again. Yeah, thank Keep you. up the good work. I'll see you this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>